Hey, good morning, everybody, and thank you for coming to the today's Restaurant News Chapter One Networking Group. We are a group of vendors in the restaurant industry, and we are here to help each other and to help restaurateurs if they have any problems or need new vendors or have a question that they'd like to ask us. So feel free to look us over. And if you are a vendor and you'd like to join us, feel free to do so. And if you are a restaurant and you want to get in touch with us as well, call us at 561-620-8888 or our website, trnusa.com. We have a couple of new faces on the board today. So I'm going to ask them just to give us a quick hello and what you do. Tim, Tim Canterbury, good morning. Hey, good morning. Thank you for having me, Howard. Uh, good morning, everybody. My name is Tim Canterbury. I work for a company called Phoby Soft, which is, uh, stands for Food and Beverage Software. And we are based in the Jacksonville area, but we have, we have people uh, all around really the country and, and primarily the Southeast. Uh, what we do in a nutshell is that we are budgeting and real-time P&L software for the restaurant industry. Um, and I say real-time P&L as opposed to the typical model of someone getting their numbers, you know, two to three weeks in arrears. We're not trying to take the place of the accountant, but what we are trying to do is give somebody up-to-date live numbers at any point in time. Okay, welcome. Thank you. And... Seth Levy? Yes. Hi, Howard. Hi, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Seth Levy. I'm with Current Energy. So we're an energy broker. Uh, we work both with electricity as well as natural gas. So in the deregulated states, and for anybody who's in, I can go over that at some point, which states are included, but Florida is for natural gas. Um, we are able to help them to work with all the different companies that can provide pricing for them, find the best price possible for that natural gas or electricity. So they would always have their utility. That doesn't change. It would be people's gas or city gas, whatever the case may be, but it would help them to get the best rate for what they're paying on the gas or electricity. So that's what we do. Okay. Thank you. Uh, okay. We're going to, uh, go into our regular who's who. And uh, when you do your intro, please give us the information on how we can contact you. Give us your, your phone number or your website or your email address. So uh, Chris, haven't seen you in a while. Why don't you start us off? Chris Rodriguez. Uh, I think I only missed one week. <laughs> we well, it seems are, like a long uh, time when you're not here. Yeah, so Kevin, uh, John Mullen, and I are strategic supply chain partners. We function as an outsourced purchasing department for our clients. Uh, uh, primary role that we play is uh, renegotiating or, or negotiating uh, enhanced uh, distribution agreements with uh, broadline distributors such as U.S. Foods, Cisco, uh, Cheney Brothers. Uh, on and on and on. Uh, typically, uh, we save our clients between eight and 15% on what they have been paying simply by putting a better deal in place for them. Uh, once we get master distribution in place, the next thing we do is go to the manufacturer level, get deviated pricing in, in, in place for them. Um, and we are uh, continuing to uh, show uh, phenomenal savings. We just got another round of reports uh, uh, for no November. Our largest client uh, saw another $2 reduction in average case cost, which is uh, quite exciting for us to see. Um, and, you know, we're expanding, uh, working with various uh, GPOs around the country, bringing those in when they can uh, benefit clients as well. Kevin, anything you want to add to that, sir? Kevin, oh, that's good far, by the way. I am in Florida, and uh, Tim and and Steph, say your name again for me. Steph or Steph? Steph. 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 I'm sorry. 
Um, welcome to the group, and I would like to talk, talk to both of you. I think we might have some opportunity for each of you in, in Florida. And I'm, I'm based out of uh, Leesburg, near, near Orlando. I'm, so, I'm in D.C. now, but I spent almost my entire life in Florida. I just moved up here about a year and a half ago. Right. Uh, I have family kind of in the area and other reasons, so, but, but I'm, Florida's been my stomping grounds for most of my life. We'll go. Welcome to the group and uh, look forward to talking to you both. Thank you very much. Hey, Kevin, give him some contact info. Sure. Uh, my number is 407-497-9495, and that'll pop up at the end of the meeting. Uh, you can look us up at uh, www.ssc.partners. You want to get a kind of a view of what we do and who we work with and a little bit of a bio on the team. Um, we're all restaurant uh uh, veterans uh, and came up through casual dining for the most part in the early days of steak and ale and Bennigan's and Fridays and P.F. Chang's and so on. So we've been doing this our entire lives um, and we've covered many states and restaurants and locations throughout the southeast, uh, all the way up to the north, all the way up to the northeast. All right. Uh, John Mulholland, you want to add anything? Yeah, you know. It doesn't hurt to have a restaurant give us a try. So if any of those guinea pigs out there want an idea how much we can save them, just let us know. We're not going to tie you down. Yeah, I mean, every restaurant should at least be giving you a call to see what you can save them. Yeah. Especially in these times. And that's uh, that's the subject of the discussion I want to have after we do our intros. Uh, uh, Lori. Hi. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Lori Morris, ARF Financial. You can reach me on my cell, 678-618-5216. And I'm here to help any restaurant owners uh, with some working capital, bridge loans, uh, revolving line of credit, any way I can help you at all, um, please give me a call, ARF Financial. Okay. And how do we reach you? Lori Morris. Uh, 678-618-5216. Okay, thank you. John McBride, good morning. John McBride, you there? We can see you. You mean me? McCabe? Uh, there he is. I'm, okay. uh, I'm sorry. That's okay. I haven't, been, I haven't done this in two weeks. I forgot everybody. <laughs> sorry. Oh <my laughs> Good morning, everyone. I'm John McCabe with Carpaccioni. We're a large <laughs> manufacturer of frozen dessert equipment and pastry equipment. We also distribute ESA display cases for ice cream, chocolate, and pastry. Uh, probably some big news we have coming out is that this uh, dairy-free and vegan is getting bigger and bigger all the time. And we're offering a class now in uh, North Carolina for making dairy-free desserts. So we'll be, I'll get the dates on that. If anybody's interested, we can set you up. So I'm at 401-368-6406. I can reach on my uh, email, John M at Carpajani, C-A-R-E-I-G-I-A-N-I dash usa.com we're part of the ollie group which is a large group of uh, manufacturers of food service equipment around the world thanks a lot okay. thank you terry good morning terry today's restaurant news uh 561-620-8888 give me a call any uh buddy opening a restaurant anybody wanting to open a restaurant um wherever you're at this group can help you my particular position is to find with our group here find where the restaurants are coming in florida and in georgia and let the vendors know so that they can help you this list is second to none in the u.s as far as quantity and quality of leads per month we give you a uh, spreadsheet and an excel format so you can do whatever you want with it, sort it however you want. And uh, I guarantee you, there are many leads to be had. 40 to now 70 
a month in Florida, which has grown tremendously. Georgia also growing a bit slower pace. You're not going to get 70 new ones a month. You're going to probably get 40 <laughs> to 50, but that is a lot. And especially for what we charge, you're also getting owner's <coughs> name, email addresses, uh, where it's going to be, the time frame, a lot of information. If you want to see a sample, uh, the vendors here, any vendors, email me, terry at trnusa.com. Happy to send you a sample. Give me a call, whatever. I can help you find what you're looking for. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'm not quite sure where Debbie Danto is right now. I mean, she's been running for several months now. I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, David. <laughs> okay. Um, Debbie Danto, Danto Builders, and we are a general contractor and we do design build. We're we like we love being a part of the process from the from concept to completion, but we're happy to take a set of plans as well and just build off of those. We walk our clients through the complete process from understanding their concepts their um, menu so that the equipment's um, selected from that. And of course, I called John Marinick in for the kitchen design and we put the, the team together if needed for the rest of the design, um, the architectural and construction set. We've even helped um, clients when they need the um, construction budget and plans for their financing, especially SBA. And then of course we submit for permit and then build the the uh, restaurant, whether it's ground up or it's a build out tenant improvements. And then we help them um, and advise them along the way as well. We also do a lot of healthcare, industrial and, and government work. I always like mentioning that we like we do government work, not that we really like it all the time, but but um, you really have to have your act together to do government work um, with respect to the processes and procedures and the paperwork. And we've really tried to do that with all our projects so that they're documented well. We work with a lot of out-of-state um, clients and, and it works really well because number one, they they we're from the we're both from the Midwest and, and people get that feel from us because of our work ethic and because we always we take the projects personally and really take care of the clients. But we also have systems in place like daily reports that are sent out to the client every day after each work day, let it, showing them the progress with narrative and, and pictures. So also involved in the um, community. Um, and actually I do have an announcement. I was just uh, approved to be the chair elect designate, designate for the, the Greater Fort Lauderdale Chamber of Commerce, which means I'll be the chair of the chamber in 2025. Congratulations. So yeah, it's, it's an honor, you know, out of all the very talented and smart people, um, at that chamber um, to be elected and, and uh, trusted to take that position in the future. And then, of course, I'm also involved with FRLA. I'm on the board there, as well as um, Florida Design and Construction Professionals. And, and we're growing there, and, and it's a great group to be a part of as well if you have some other um, areas that, that you need some uh, design and construction professionals. So thank you. And... Uh, Look forward to uh, hearing the rest of you speak. Hey, thank you. I'm going to go to John Marinak next, just because to keep it in the family. <laughs> um, John Marinak, Marinak Food Service Consultants. Um, we do a lot of restaurant design and consulting. Um, we've been really busy. I I don't know what it is, but lately we've been doing a lot of. Um, fixing up of other people's plans. Um, a lot of other consultants out there, um, I I don't know what it is, but uh, they've been either over-designing or uh, just doing things just not the right way. And and they, they've been being thrown out of the, um, uh, thrown back for like different revisions and different reasons. So we've been getting called in for that kind of stuff. And, uh, uh, pretty interesting. Uh, right now, also, specializing in um, ventless uh, systems. I'm starting to really get involved with that a lot um, with the ventless systems. So, if anybody out there has a place that they don't have a you know a chance to get a hood, or they want to get into a place that that doesn't have a hood, 
and they want to get by without having to put in a hood and that it saves you a lot of money. Um, you know, these are, these are options that are out there um, for, for these, uh, these ways of designing things. Um, and Debbie, there's a couple things that are starting to move. We'll have to talk about those because uh, the, the homeless shelter is starting to move forward. Okay. Um, and, uh, and then also Debbie helped me a lot with um, uh, some people over in Central Asia that they're trying to uh, do some uh, like a sister city type event. And uh, they're starting to move forward, but really slow, but they're starting to move forward. At least we have uh, some some groundwork and she put us in touch with the right people. So thank you for that. Oh, you're welcome. You know, Jen, who is eligible really for a hoodless system? Because it's always been based on menu items. Or is there something that can apply to all menus now? Uh, yeah, pretty much. Uh, there are there's even grills, griddles and everything that are out there that have their own built in systems. And so let's say, for instance, you want to do hamburgers and you and you and you're inside the middle of a room that requires a, a hood. It's a downdraft system that basically is built into the cabinet in the base and it and it it takes care of it all that way. It's really yeah, that's huge that that's that can be that has been the hold up on a number of our jobs in the past because for a couple of reasons number one the hood can be complicated given um the building but but also because a lot of times the owner wants to take that piece because it is a big line item and so um not understanding it as well as they they should uh it takes longer and holds up jobs in the end because of all the inspections and everything Mm -hmm. So that's great to hear. Yeah, and there's also ventless systems that that you can put in that are actually a hood, but they're ventless, and so they don't have to vent anywhere. They just they just sit above the units. But then those require electric systems, where uh, some people still want to use gas. So, but anyway, that's who we are. My number is nine five four eight one seven one one eight three, and. Stop the phones from ringing off the hook, okay? Many <laughs> years ago in Manhattan, I, in, I installed a hood in a restaurant in the ground floor of a skyscraper, probably, I'm guessing, I remember, 40 some odd stories high, and we put in a uh, a, well, a self-washing hood, and, and we vented out to the street rather than going to the roof. So that was another option. It's, it's expensive, but... but <laughs> less labor okay uh darren good morning good morning everybody darren gall tracy.net that's t-r-a-c-i.net uh, we are a communications consulting and solution provider what does that mean we help people find the right phone and internet solution for their business we work with all the carriers so you don't have to run through the maze of figuring out who offers what we have a free consultation where we find out everything about what your needs are and help you find the right solution within your budget. Again, Darren Gall, Tracy.net, that's T-R-A-C-I.net. Uh, you can reach us at sales at Tracy.net, online at www.tracy.net or 954-354-7000. Thank you. Uh, Randy, good morning. Good morning, everybody. Hope you had a wonderful Thanksgiving. Uh, Randy Pumputis here with Heartland Payroll and HR, uh, cell number 585-622-2993. Um, Heartland does everything for a new business to existing acquisition business in the hospitality industry. So from a startup to multi-locations, we can customize the program for them. Um, real interesting. I don't know who brought it up. I'll just give you a little flavor on the payroll. Of what's going on right now is uh, employers are really utilizing applicant tracking and onboarding, vetting out vetting out the employees that they want on their roster, um, becoming very educated on WOTC tax credits and and the opportunity to recoup money at the end of the year on their taxes. Um, we're seeing it, especially with the influx of people coming in to Florida. You're seeing a smarter uh, and more savvy entrepreneur. Uh, real big change over the past you know, six months since June to now. 
And, uh, you know, that's the first thing they ask is what can you do for us from a tax credit? So uh, getting more savvy, uh, really ma maximizing their, their employee roster and vetting out. And uh, it's exciting to see it, you know, because they're getting a quality employee. And that, you know, that in turn returns, it brings in retention. Okay, how do we reach you? Hello, you gave it, do it again. 585-622-2993. Uh, I will not give my email because it has every letter in the alphabet, but I know you're going to be sending that out. Okay, thank you. Mr. Smith, good morning. Hey, good morning, everybody. I am Rob Smith, and I solve the labor shortage for small to mid-sized QSRs by replacing their cashiers with Samsung self-ordering kiosks powered by Grubber software. And as you can see, I brought one of my cashiers with me today. Um, Self-ordering kiosks uh, improve the customer experience because people buy with their eyes and visual menus um, sell more often. They increase the average ticket because they have built-in automatic upselling. They increase order accuracy because there's no order, order accuracy missed in translation between the consumer and the cashier. And they legitimize small business by providing big business technology. Um, if you know a QSR, then you knew a QSR that would benefit from self-ordering kiosks. You can reach me at 561-609-6405. That's my direct line, 561-609-6405 or rsmith at touchsuite.com. Robert, can I ask you something? Can, can yeah. those kiosks, are they one standard size or can they be miniaturized? Or well. Grubber offers hundreds of different models. They put big ones in stadiums. Uh, this is the QSR version. It's the only model. It's the Samsung version. Mm -hmm. It's 28 inches tall, 13 inches wide, nine inches deep. So on a counter, it doesn't take any more space than a cash register. But this one behind me, I don't know how much of that you can see, but it's on a stand. And the stands run, the stands are expensive because they're very heavy duty. So the thing doesn't fall over, but the stand is about $600. That's not bad. It's not bad. Okay. It's not bad. Somebody's saying it's not bad. I like that. I said that. <laughs> uh, Jeff, Jeff Kranz, good morning. Hi, good morning. Uh, Jeff Kranz, CPS Processing. Uh, we've been in business uh, since 1988, since before there were credit card machines. CoCard's one of the largest groups of, in the credit card processing industry, and we represent every major uh, processor out there. We, uh, we stand on one basic uh, idea. We are the most competitive uh, processor out there. We will, if not give you the lowest rate, we will <clears throat> make sure that it's the lowest rate. Our equipment, uh, we sell it, or we sell at cost, or we give it away based on what the needs of the store is and how we can adapt to them. Um, uh, I don't know what else to say. We we are in the electronic processing business. Doesn't matter how you want to do an electronic transaction, we can put it together. And again, we work with every major processor and quite a few of the smaller processors. Uh, we are simply, as far as uh, CoCard's concerned, and all the, the processors, one of the biggest and best processing companies out there. Okay, thank you. John Bunn, good morning. Uh, good morning, everyone. Sorry, I was having some sound troubles. My name is John Bunn with the BH Bunn Company. With the new changes that we've seen out there, uh, it used to be one in four uh, delivery drivers admit to eating the food. As of June, we just found out it's almost 85%. So we manufacture a machine that ties the pizza boxes, uh, all different types of products. We've been around 115 years. Uh, so we're here to help and secure for uh, carrying the products out the uh, restaurants, um, for takeouts, for deliveries, for uh, even those that don't finish their food and they want to take it home, it can secure so it doesn't fall around in their car. Uh, our phone number is 1-800-222-BUNN, B-U-N-N, which is 2866. Our email is info, I-N-F-O, at BUNN Tyco, spelled B-U-N-N-T-Y-C-O dot com. Stands for BUNN Tying Company, nothing to do with Tyco. Thank you, guys. John, did you get a chance to read that 
study or that report of the study that I sent you? Uh, I haven't finished it yet. I've been kind of slammed. Okay, was was, was that specifically for for India or worldwide? Um, again, I haven't finished okay. it, um, but I will. Well, let them know. It, it's something, it's, basically, the, the gist of this article <laughs> that I sent John, I think, was that the bakery the bakery business has grown at a tremendous rate. Was it over the last year or so? Yes, over there, yeah. Yeah, so it's it's, an, it's another area that we can look at in is bakeries. Yeah, uh, I've got a lot of bakeries up in the Northeast. Uh, we just got a, another customer um, uh, who's uh, has old machines and they want to replace them. Their machines were built in the 50s. And we got another new customer who's got one machine and he's doing uh, a second one, but they're starting to ship their bakery goods all over the country. So they need to secure them inside the boxes as well. Mm. Great. Okay. Uh, Helen and Rob Gottesman uh, yes. are, are not vendors. They are. Uh, uh, we will. Well, we will well, be right? yeah. Yeah. Okay. Restaurant. They we call them the classified. We are starting a Delicious Spoonfuls Florida Inc., which will be an ice cream, coffee, and dessert bar through an ice cream cart traveling around South Florida, later in a per semi-permanent location at KC Marketplace in Point Beach. And our goal is to employ as many people with special needs as possible. We're in the process of getting on our uh, nonprofit status through the IRS, slow process, but soon. And we're just trying to get all our pieces together. It's taking a while too. And also we are starting from our profit side. We're starting a, uh, a networking event starting on Tuesdays. If you're in the South Florida area, Tuesday mornings at 8.30 in the morning, at Carmela's Kosher Restaurant on Camino Real. Contact me if you're interested and able to join or you know anybody else interested. We also okay. became recently a full distributor uh, for a new ice cream product that we hope to get into the stores too. We're also gonna be serving it through Prince. Prince um, distributors. Food, the, the distributors are <laughs> largest kosher anyway. right around. And uh, we'll let you know more about that as time goes on. Okay, thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Seth and Tim, so you've seen what we do. Uh, Seth, do you want to add anything to your intro that you might have left out? Yeah, absolutely. So again, I'm an energy broker. I think it's important to say about uh for all these restaurants, if they use natural gas for their stove, many, many of them do, the majority of them do, um, then they're paying a natural gas bill. Uh, if they have, let's say, Pico, there's a line item on that bill. It's called the, the, the gas price adjustment, the purchase gas adjustment. That purchase gas adjustment is the rate they're actually paying for the gas that they're consuming. So... Pico will always be their utility. They'll bring the gas to their door. That will never change. If they have an outage, anything like that, it all stays the same. But that rate that they're paying recently has spiked as high as $1.70 per therm. So it's been quite high. Um, we see contracts right now available for between 60, 65 cents, maybe even lower, depending on the size of the restaurant. It could also be for a hotelier that uses natural gas. Um, in the state of Florida. Um, and then the important thing is, is that we're a lot like Priceline. So it's not just that they're getting one company's price. They're going to see all the different options available to them. So they can see, is a two-year contract make more sense than a three-year contract? Is the supplier A offering a better offer than supplier B? And we'll help them with all of that. We offer, you could say, white glove service. That means they're going to work directly with me. And I will be the intermediary to all of the suppliers, which can be a bit cumbersome. If anybody has ever called customer service anywhere, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, you'll never get the same person on the phone. You have no idea what's going on. It's a mess. So I'll make sure that I hand all that back end stuff. The only thing that changes is you're going to pay the bill just like you always do. You're just going to pay less than you otherwise would. 
Okay, so for any of the vendors here on the call, this is also something that is very simple and an easy value benefit to any restaurant that you're working with. Um, so, you know, that could also create some values in regards to you bring this to the table. They also then see you as somebody who brings value in the area that you work in. So we do that. We also have referral programs and bonuses and things like that. So we can discuss that if you'd ever like to. Um, the one other thing that I wanted to mention is that um, we do this throughout the United States and any of what are called the deregulated states. In the Southeast, primarily we're talking about Florida and we're talking about Georgia uh, in the Southeast, okay? So we do also, uh, many of the Northeast states, the Midwest states, there are some states on the West Coast. Uh, if you send me an email, I will give you all the information on which states would qualify. But in the Southeast, it's Florida and Georgia. You can also go to my website, which is Current NRG, C U R R E N T, the letter N, the letter R, the letter G.com. And on that site, they'll have, I'll have a list there of all the different states that, um, that we can assist customers with. Um, it's based on being deregulated or not. So, you know, again, right now, you're talking about the difference of maybe saving 30, 40, 50% even on the natural gas and a lot of restaurateurs. Just they really just aren't aware that this is even a thing that they can do such a thing. They just pay the bill. Um, so it's part of it is an educational thing. And then part of it is making sure that you're picking the right option and that you have the right support in place so that it doesn't become cumbersome for the restaurant, um, which so we can offer you know service on all of that. My number, my cell phone number, if you want to contact 786 202 Four nine one four. My email is Seth S E T H at currentnrg.com. Just as before, C U R E N T N R G dot com. Um, and you know, I would love to not only be able to support any restaurant that's seeing this, but if you're a vendor and you have anybody that you know you're friends with, familiar with, work with, is a customer of yours, and we can help them reduce this area of cost for them. Plus, it creates cost consistency for them. They know they'll be paying, let's say. 56 cents a therm for the next three years, no matter what happens in the Ukraine, no matter what happens in Russia, no matter what happens, they'll know that for the price, the rate they're paying, it's a consistent rate over time. And that's an important thing as well. Does, there, so, does the restaurant have to be open a certain amount of time to, to not, well, no, not at all. Now, some suppliers, some suppliers do have different requirements. So the individual supplier may not service a new restaurant. But usually, even for a new restaurant, I can find a supplier that will help them, will reduce the rate and provide them savings. There just may not be as many options if you're newer. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. And Tim, you want to circle back and if we got sure. <clears throat> I would love to. I, I did not leave my contact information the first time. I put it in the chat there. But uh, my name is Tim Canterbury. My contact info is just Tim at phobisoft.com. F-O-B-E-S-O-F-T. And my cell phone number is 404-550-5967. And I'd welcome the opportunity to do a, we typically do a, about a 15 minute demo, virtual demo call to kind of go through the ins and outs of our tool. Um, to, to talk about it's one thing, but really to see it as another. And um, look, what we're doing is we're providing the, especially the independent restaurant community, those who are at the one to maybe 10 units, the access to real-time data that the big boy restaurants have. And once armed with the real-time data and once armed with an actual operating budget, a lot of independent restaurants do not work off of an operating budget. And once armed with this data, we're finding them at typically a 20% profit increase, sometimes even more which is a bold statement, but I would be happy to walk through that with somebody to show them how we do that. Um, our tool is very easy to use. It's designed to be for today's kitchen manager to engage. And what I mean by that is that today's kitchen manager may not have a lot of restaurant business acumen, and we're going to lay it out in a format that's very simple and easy for them to understand and engage. Okay, thanks. You know, in this economic time, uh, everybody in business is looking to save money, especially restaurants. Restaurants are getting, you know, hit on the chin with uh, inflation and with labor shortages, et cetera, et cetera. And um, I, 
came across an article that I think touches on a lot of these things. Uh, you know, the general public is being hit with inflation and their discretionary spending is being squeezed and they're not going out to restaurants as much as they used to. Mm. And restaurants have to do something to, uh, you know, stay in business and to make some changes. So I can't, like I said, I came across this article and I'm going to do my David Letterman top, top six list and you can jump in after each one. I, I know Chris, you're going to jump all over one of them. Uh, <laughs> the, the guys from strategic supply are going to jump on this one. Uh, the first one was offer more discounts and promotions that, uh, you know, the, the two for ones, the early birds, et cetera, et cetera. Can't give it away. Hey. Yeah, no, not not right now. I would say that that one would wouldn't it would fly for the uh, rest rest. You know, who's ever eating? It's not going. They're, they're struggling now. The portions are already smaller, and um, you know the 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 prices are higher. I don't know about in a normal economy that would work, but unless you have a lot of room for. Flex financial flexibility. Yeah, yeah, that one, that one would be tough. Good loyalty idea. programs, loyalty programs that, are the way to loyalty. go for discounts and promotions. Mm. That's number six, believe it or not. <laughs> that was good. Uh, number good. number two was reduce operating hours, and I'm I'm seeing that more and more. Uh, mm. Restaurants that used to be open breakfast, lunch, and dinner are now only open breakfast and lunch. And some of them are some of them closing on certain days. Yeah, I would have called a lot of our restaurants or have uh, diminished lunches. They, they only open up for an, like an early dinner during the week. They have no lunch. Mm. They don't want to put up, mm. uh, put mm. labor and they mm. don't want to take, you know, put their kitchens um, working over, over work, overworking during the day because they don't have enough customers coming in in the afternoon. Right. Yeah, I yeah, see I, it a lot too. Right. I know plenty, plenty of those. Yeah, I mean, and some of them are not, uh, you're not, you're little tiny restaurants. They're kind of big. Yeah. And they, uh, they just diminish, they, they can't find labor. Maybe they need to have more takeout type services. I mean, Lenny's Pizza, like crazy over here, is busy like you wouldn't believe. Yeah, but takeout's not going to change anything in the kitchen. No, they still no. need to keep their cooks and everybody else there. Yeah. No, no, um, no. So no, if they no. open up later, and maybe and they, can they need to do their that. Foods for dinner. By the way, I, I wanted to say something here. Darren, you'd be interested in this too. You talk about labor shortage. There's a guy in San Francisco, Bazile, co founder and CEO, Alex Kochinski. He explains his company's fully autonomous, autonomous robot ran restaurant that recently opened in San Francisco on Barney and Company. After two years in the making, a group of Stanford graduates is opening their first restaurant location where robots are serving up fresh meals for low prices. So yeah. you talk about automation, maybe that's the answer. Maybe they need Partly. more robots. Partly. I like well, you. That, certain, that certainly is going to have a, a bigger influence as the, the years go on. If, if, if our economy keeps going the way it is. Mm -hmm. And the, uh, the third one was, which, which Rob just said, reduce staff. Uh, so that's one of the keys. If you get reduced staff and you can get a robot to do what somebody's doing, uh, you're, you're saving a ton of money right there. And here's the one for uh, Chris and, and Kevin. Remove lower margin menu items. Uh, <clears throat> I know that many restaurants need to sit down and look at their menu and see what is working, what is not. A lot of restaurateurs are creatures of habit and they'll fight to the death to keep a menu item on the menu, even if it's not bringing in the proper amount of income because yeah, they used to because they used to it. Yeah, they think, oh, it's a great dish, it tastes great. You do what's called a dog store matrix. Okay. Dog dog store matrix. You look at high profit, high sales 
those items, those are the ones that you want to keep. You have low profit, low sales items. Those are the ones you want to get rid of. The ones you need to pay attention to are the ones that might be high profit, but you're not getting enough sales. You need to figure out ways to move more of those. And there's other ones that are low profit, high profitability, or high sales in terms of customer preference. You have to figure out what the, those are called puzzles. You have to figure out what to do with those. Your customers love them. You may not have it priced right. You may need to uh, redesign it from a raw ingredient standpoint, or you may need to accept that you have to carry those and they're going to be loss leaders. You also have items that may have a lower profit margin, but they have a higher dollar profit. For example, most restaurants are selling steaks at over a 40% cost. That's okay. You're probably making more dollar profit on a steak than you're selling other items on your menu for, for total price. So the whole, and most restaurateurs, again, do, they are don't have any idea how to do any of that. About the business, but they're not analytical brains. And to be profitable in this business, you have to get out of the creative equation and get into the analytical side of the equation if you're ever going to make money. So, Tim, hearing what you do, you probably get that. I do. Uh, I work with restaurant companies. I, I also work with non-restaurant companies. Uh, I, I, have, I have a client with my consulting business that is in the solar energy business. They've been at it for 10 years. The guy that founded the company is an engineer. I just introduced the concept of budgeting to them for the first time this year. It shocks me. It's amazing. The way yeah. entrepreneurs don't know how to run a business. Yeah. It, so it, it, power to amazing. your point, yeah. Analyze your menu. Understand where you're... It's a business. The purpose of being in business is to make money. It's not to sell good tasting food only. You're a business. Analyze your business, understand what's working, understand where you're making money. There, there was a, just throw one, one, if I could throw one thing the in there. Too. There was a you mentor. Know, you of want mine. to get, attract, and keep talent. How about you treat your people right? This business, this industry is notorious for treating people horribly. They treat Amen. them horribly. Yep. Yeah. Because they're not college educated or they're high school dropouts or they can barely read, or they're immigrants or whatever. If we would ever learn how to treat them like human beings first and understand the concept of employee engagement and what it takes to attract and keep and promote and develop talent, there's restaurant companies out there that get the cream of the crop. I hear all y'all talking about restaurants can't get people. Every one of y'all probably knows at least one restaurant that you walk into how come they're always staffed? How come everything's going great here? The difference is ownership and management culture to treat their people. I'd like to add that I think upselling is something that restaurateurs, whether they're using kiosks or not, obviously I want them to use kiosks, but even if they have cashiers at the register, upselling, most restaurants are not utilizing that enough. They need to train their staff to upsell, even if it's, you know, would you like an apple pie? Would you like a, a soda with that? And the only time their cashiers are doing that is when the owner is standing next to them. As soon as they walk away, they don't do that. They just take your order and fill it out. Upselling is the key to increasing average ticket. It's that simple. Whether you're using a human being or an electronic mm. register, mm. it's all the same. And There's you're also, exactly uh, right. I happened to walk into a fast food restaurant for the first time in a hundred years to show my friend what it looked like. They had those kiosks. Well, guess what? She's all, oh, look, I didn't know you could get that. So she added that on. And then she and it looked really pretty. And she added that on. And I'm like, so by I the mean, the old. Yeah. Yeah, the ultimate case study. The ultimate case study is McDonald's. You look at McDonald's; they all started that with the "Would you like fries with that?" and they increased revenues by like forty million dollars as soon as they introduced. They started deploying that technique. It's really and simple. This was a steak and shake, and it was unbelievable because you would never, you know. She goes, "Oh, I've never been in there." Yeah, I can't tell you how many restaurants they they release a new dessert, something new. And nobody's selling it. Nobody it's knows on the about it. It's on the menu, but nobody's mentioning it. Nobody's selling it. And new right. customers don't know it exists. Right. That's you management. Up, 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 that's up that's poor yeah. management. Yeah, it is. Well, I, Another yeah. point for the servers 
if they get more items sold, they get a bigger tip because it's based on the amount of the Absolutely. sale. Absolutely. Yeah. So, well, I mean, you it makes really sense to it say, oh, would you like some coffee point. and dessert? You know, we have now have the apple pie a la mode or the pecan pie or whatever it is. So. Exactly. Well, um, from my my impression of the restaurants that do well are the restaurants that have staff that stays around. Mm -hmm. And staff that has stays around uh, always knows what's on the menu, always does things. Most of the people that, that get hired in restaurants, they're not looking for a full-time job. They don't make enough money. Uh, they don't understand that if they do the job well, they'll make the money and but they don't give it enough time and the but is, owners but of the is, restaurants is it, don't train them properly but you know, is yeah. employee is employee longevity is that a result of success or is it the reason for success it's the result of success i think it's not the, the reason, reason for success. i think success. it's the reason it, for it, the result of you know, success Jeff, and Jeff. then the reason for success is because their staff is always there their staff is known when you walk into a restaurant uh, I go to one restaurant in on the east side, one of my larger restaurants. They have a staff for lunch and a staff for dinner. And those people have been there for years and years because not only do they get tips, they get very good tips. And they always have a lot of customers, even if they're waiting online on the weekends, because the the restaurant tour cares about the food that they're serving and they care about the presentation and they care about the people that are serving the food. And if they don't like those people, they're not going to be there very long. So they change and their, and their waiters and waitresses have been there for years because they know they can make a good living because they know that the restaurant is going to take care of them and everything that is on the menu, they present to the customer. They don't wait around. They walk it. As soon as you walk in, there's a waitress or a waiter coming to the table. How many times have you walked into a restaurant and right. no one's been there? No one comes up to you. You know, Jeff, you just hit it right on the head. You gave such a, a fantastic schematic. You should be smoking a cigar because that's exactly what it is. It has to be all around. It has to be robust. It has to be cu customer service. People liking the food. The fact that workers have to be trained giving the right reinforcement positively to be want to keep on doing the job. And I'm going to tell you this over and over again. I, you know, I'm in the field of disabilities. There's 17 or 18 Vidian bows that are expanding all over the country with people with disabilities. There must be some demand for people like that who or, or, and, and, the, and the customers are keep coming back and forth because of it. So, you know, we have workers with disabilities who will get uh, the, the employers will get a big tax breaks, especially uh, veterans in general. And, you know, these things have got to be enhanced. I don't know how to project it out there, but apparently they're getting the message out. The problem is they make the staff feel disposable, no matter who they are. Right. It makes yeah. no difference. Okay. They're effective. We could get 10 more people if you leave. But Jeff, you hit it right. right on the head. That's the way it should be. Question is, I don't know why it's not. Um, it's a what? tough time. It's tough oh. times out there for the restaurants and the restaurant owners. Uh, they, the first priority is their staff in the kitchen. The second yeah. priority is the people up front. If the food is right, then the people up front will be able to present it properly. But they don't keep they they don't even keep their staff in the back long enough to make sure because the owners usually are the best cooks in the in the place and they're not in the back all the time. But they have to know they, they they're not focusing on their cost. They have to know the cost and, well, and, and they have to be able to take and then the number five on, on this list was simplify the menu. If you can take one dish that you I'm not a chef and I'm not a restaurant owner, but I, you know, I've seen enough. If you have a, a dish that you're making with a certain type of base or a sauce or something and you can use that same in another dish. It simplifies the process, it lowers your cost, and it, it, it makes it easier all around. And, right. And, and of course, the uh, last one that somebody mentioned before was create loyalty programs. And that's, that goes right yeah. to, to marketing. I will tell you right now that a lot of the restaurants that I deal with, the loyalty programs are out the window. Really? 
Yeah, they're not really. Yeah, why? Because why? I do not understand. I don't understand. I mean, the I've got, program. They like used to give out a certain amount of points or if you went to some place maybe, year, maybe because year it's round. Not per, maybe because it's not personal. Maybe it needs to be more personal, you know, instead of just a numbers game. You know, it's like the insurance, uh, trying to get insurance for the week or selling cars. You know, you make a certain amount of sales, you get a point, you have a point system and this and Joe Schmo that's, gets but, but that's for the I low know. end, for the lower end restaurants, not for the not for the middle of the road and the upper restaurants. Right. Right. Yeah. You're going go in for, you know, are you going to, to a drive up and you're going to get points or you're going to go in, sit down. And, you know, another thing is, too, the restaurant business has always been a people business, people to people contact. It's OK to have an automated restaurant with robots, but we can't replace people and, and, and the employers, you know, giving a service out, hospitality out to uh, customers and things like that it can be used as a tool. But can you imagine a whole the whole restaurant industry changing just to be with automatic machines? I mean, I can't. Guys, imagine. guys, guys, guys I hate to tell you that this is this group here is an older demographic. Okay, yeah. the millennials and the generation coming after them. There are countless studies that say they prefer to interact with a device than a human being. One hundred grown up with these what? things. And I do. I do. I like it because nobody bothers me. I can sit there and I can check out on my table. I I I can't vote what you want to change like that. A minute ago, there are also countless studies out there that people, when they're and it started with online ordering, the average check on online ordering is higher because people don't feel the pressure of somebody selling to them. Right. So they'll buy stuff that they wouldn't buy. Because the, the, they want the waiter to leave the table. Don't annoy me with all your. And they don't have to make that. a quick decision. Exactly. Yeah, yeah up, but Chris should have. When but Chris it should have. Feels like you're being sold to people. Hate it. When yeah, they, but, when they yeah. feels like you're enhancing the dining experience and it's all about verbiage, works. Regardless, the the two generations that are going to dominate the restaurant industry, which is not us. Because we're all moving towards the grave in the next 20 years. Hey. The generation Z, I'm not planning that. They want to interact with a device. So all of this robotics and these kiosks and everything else, whether we like it or not, it is the wave of the future for the restaurant industry. Yeah. You happen to be yeah, but, correct. You're correct. Uh, yeah, 100%. but Chris, let me tell you something. I'm not saying that robots are bad. I think they're great. But you know, we we human beings are there. You know, I mean, uh, maybe we have to refine ourselves to some degrees. Like I said, I agree with Jeff here. You know, there, there are ways, there are incentives to encourage more reinforcement in the restaurant business. And, and there, are, there are ones surviving. I'm not saying that robots shouldn't be included. They should be. I agree with it. But I, to, 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 to have it completely taken over robotics, yeah. I don't know. It, it, will, it will eventually take over. How many, how many right y'all have, how many y'all have seen groups of young people in a restaurant where everybody at the table is yes. texting people on their phone instead of talking right. to each other? There are right. also studies out there. There were restaurants that that would give you a discount if you turn your phones off. You know why? Because they knew that with everybody with the phones out. It added 20 minutes to the dining room, the table turn time. So if you could get people off their phones, taking the pictures of the food and texting them, oh, look where we're at, the social media stuff, you did more volume. Uh, I, the thinking we have doesn't necessarily apply to this generation. Right. Let I'm me helping. let me jump in here for a second. Just want I want to thank Seth. And Tim, for coming today, welcome. I hope you enjoyed yourself and hope we'll see you again. Uh, everybody else, again, thank you for coming. Uh, mm -hmm. Next week, I forgot to mention my mistake. Next week, we have a guest speaker who was a business, co a business coach. And during the week upcoming, I will be emailing you with uh, information about him and some uh, literature that he needs to present during uh, his time with us and and a uh, workbook for what he's going to do. I have just one more thing to say. Chris is absolutely right. 
He is. About the electronics that are going on in the restaurants. Right. The other thing is that the, the this generation, they don't come in and look at menus. They go into a restaurant and know exactly what they want. They or they go to the restaurant that they has exactly what they want because they're not really interested in the sit down experience. They, they're interested in the food that they're buying. Our, and most of the time it's cost effective. Customers before they ever walk in the door. Yeah. You're right. They, I mean, all before they walk in the door. You've got I mean, my youngest son, he's 37 years old. He doesn't go to a restaurant unless he knows what he's going to buy beforehand. And what why, why sit down? And how they liked it or didn't like it, how it was cooked, what it tasted like. They know everything before they walk in the door. That's right. That's the problem. The problem is that they don't go in thinking they're going into a restaurant. They go in thinking about what food am I going to buy? It's only a problem what? if you if you of our generation. Yeah. If their generation, yes, your son's generation, some of us are old. <laughs> your gen- You're right. You might be. <laughs> your son's generation is open, are the ones opening up the Let's restaurants. All of us. They, they, you know what I'm saying? All right, Chris. Yeah, it, it, you know, it's a problem or, you know, it's cliche, but it's an opportunity to figure out how to capitalize on new ways people interact with restaurants. Exactly. It's all right, let me uh, officially end the meeting. If you want to stick around and talk, I'll keep it open. Thank you all for coming. We'll see you again next week. Uh, please uh, try to be here next week for the uh, business coach and uh, stay safe.